Let me start off by asking you a few questions. How many of you in this room hunt? Okay, that's about average. How many of you in this room have ever gone hunting? No. Oh boy, that's, that's above average, I think. How about the rest of you? Do you have friends or family that hunt? I mean, really, we, we live in northwestern Ontario, so we all know someone who hunts. How many of you know someone who has their own hunting TV show? <laughs> well, as of now, you all know someone who has their own hunting TV show. I'm the producer and host of the Real Deal TV show that airs coast to coast in Canada on Wild TV. Uh, first off, let me thank you for considering me to be your guest speaker. Today's topic is about conservation and my own sanity, which many people have questioned over the last <laughs> five plus years. I'm not going to bore you too, too bad with a big long 15 minute speech. Since my specialty is filming and videos, I'll let some of my videos speak for themselves. And I'd like to start with an educational discussion I had with our professional hunter Vihan shortly after harvesting my first African animal. Well Vihan, this is a, a little, little bit different than hunting in North America, but you've taught me a lot in the last 24 hours about Africa, about the hunting and what it does to the hunting. And if you don't mind taking a minute or two here, could you explain to the viewers what us coming to Africa does for not just you, the PH and the company, but for the locals and for, for the all of Africa? How, what do we do by coming here? People that come from, from Canada or any, any part of the world and come and hunt here, they, they inject quite a bit of a, a foreign currency into our country. Yes, sir. Um, and that money is used to employ people, it's used to actually feed people because this meat gets, gets used to uh, give to our staff or uh, we, we can legally uh, sell meat in, in, uh, in South Africa. Um, it also does a lot for the, for the actual conservation of the animal. It certainly does. Um, I've got a simple saying that, that says if it pays, it stays. You know, um, un unfortunately, when, when we have areas or hunting areas, we, no, not unfortunately, but we as people and as hunters um, has to take over the, the con conservation role. Yes, and the we cons do. conservation role is done by hunting animals. Um, yes, ecotourism makes a big part of, of, uh, of um, our income, but there's nothing that, that brings so much um, uh, revenue into the country. Like you said, if you, if it, if you pay, it stays. And the, my version of that is, if you put a value on this animal, it's going to be protected. No, exactly. This, this animal is valuable now because I'm willing to come and hunt for it. Exactly. So it's protected by not just yourself, but by the locals, because there is a value to this animal no, now. No, for sure. Um, I mean, if, if, if wild animals are uh, competing with uh, like domestic like cattle and stuff, people will get rid of it because right. the, the wild animals will, will not bring in, in revenue. So the end of the day this is what's happening here um, and I, as I say I know people say how can you conserve an animal by killing it but but if you think about it that's that's how it works exactly Vihan I can't thank you enough not just for this animal but for the education that's a big part of it thank you I no appreciate problem. It. congratulations on a very nice animal thank you sir now understanding what Vihan said we have to realize that hunting is a massive conservation tool that has proven to work all around the world. Another example of this is one of the properties that we hunted. There was a problem giraffe. This bull giraffe had wrecked the farmer's fence on multiple occasions and we were actually asked to hunt this giraffe to help out the farmer. We politely declined as it was something we really weren't comfortable with. But we learned a lot from this one giraffe. We learned that the farmer does not hunt and if this had happened several years ago, the farmer simply would have poisoned this giraffe to get rid of him. And in the process of poisoning this one giraffe, he would have poisoned dozens of animals in Africa because the animal population is so high. And you know what? The farmer really wouldn't have cared. Many of these animals actually compete with his cattle for feed and water. So why the big change of heart for the farmer? Very simply money. 
The animals that this farmer used to put up fences to try to keep out are now valuable to him because people like myself and others are willing to pay to hunt them. So instead of these animals being killed, poisoned, or destroyed, they are now protected by this same farmer. Just think about that for a minute and I'm going to play my next video clip of my red heart of beast hunt. Uh, the special thing about this property is right over my shoulder is we have hippopo uh, sorry, a rhinoceros on, on the property and this is really cool because they're so protected that, that the property manager is actually going to come with us and just to make sure there's never any, we're not hunting anywhere near where the, the rhinoceros are. What an amazing experience right there, rhinoceros. How do you get three or four people across a wide open plain with just one tree for cover? Simple. You make yourself look like another animal. We bunched up real tight together and Vihan used the shooting sticks and put them above his head to, to make us look like we had horns. Now, word of advice, this will not work in North America, so don't even try it. But I'll be darned if it didn't work perfectly well on this hunt. Good job. Yeah. It dropped. It dropped. So we've got someone else here. Uh, we've got Clinton back here, which is a property manager. And a big part of this trip for me has been education. Uh, I have learned so much about Africa, about hunting in Africa, about, about the culture, about the people. But I'd, if you don't mind, Vihan, I'd, I'd like you to explain Clinton's role on this property and, and, and why he's here with us on this hunt. I'll gladly do so. Thanks, Thanks for being here, Clinton. Uh, um, well, the, the property is, is managed by Clinton. And as I said, there's quite a bit of rhino on the property. Now, as everyone around the world knows, there's a big rhino poaching situation going on all over the world, and especially in South Africa. Um, South Africa has, I think, 85 or 90 percent of the of the world's white rhino population and this property hosts quite a bit of of rhino so unfortunately a few years ago there was a rhino poached in the area and um, the people got together and they and they said listen we are not going to get rid of the rhino we are going to make a huge huge conservation effort to look after this rhino um, so what they did is they employed and trained anti-poaching people that basically live with the rhino 24 hours a day. Especially when the moon is full, um, that's when there's a high high um, rate of rhino poaching. And Clinton is here because um, he, he knows exactly, he's got radio contact with the people that looks after the rhino. And as I explained earlier, they, they don't necessarily walk 10 yards from the rhino and say, uh, hello my friend, how are you type of thing, you know. The, but they are in the area all the time, they look for tracks, they look for, for vehicle movement, They um, they, they, they basically look after the rhino, so we don't want to go close uh, to them and we obviously don't want to uh, put anyone in danger. So Clinton is here and he will tell us, okay, in this area we can hunt because he's just spoken to the guys and, then, and they're not close. So More than just what you see on TV and more than what we've just explained, this, but this was a really neat factor that I, that I wanted to share with everyone. So thanks, Vian. As you can see, this was a very special hunt on so many levels. This property we were on had 19 white rhinos on it. And you heard Vihan explain that several years ago one of these rhinos was poached. And they're poached just for their horn. They take their horn and nothing else. So at that point they decided they were going to protect these rhinos 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Imagine the expense of doing that. So what they do to fund part of this initiative is they allow hunting of some of the other animals on the property. Some of the money from that hunt, from my red hartebeest hunt, went directly to conserving those 
those white rhinos. There is no doubt in my mind, no doubt whatsoever, that without hunting, most, if not all of those 19 white rhinos would have been killed by poachers by now. So hopefully next time you or I see someone on TV hunting in Africa, or really anywhere else for that matter, maybe we will understand that oftentimes there is more to it than meets the eye. Now, back to my TV show. <laughs> this TV show cost me between thirty and $75,000 a year to produce. Without sponsors, partners, and supporters, and, and I see quite a few people in this room that have helped me out over the years as well. Without those supporters, I wouldn't be here doing this. I have to purchase my airtime from the networks, and I hope to sell commercials and advertising packages to pay for my expenses. I've been called crazy for doing what I do. Trying to keep this TV show going for over half a decade has by far been the toughest thing I have ever done. I tell people it's a labor of love because I have yet to make a single penny doing this. But I'll tell you I've gotten to do some pretty, pretty amazing things that I never would have been able to do if it weren't for the TV show. Things such as starting my own trapping and outdoors retail store, purchasing a commercial property to have a studio and retail space in, and of course things like traveling and getting educated about the South African conservation efforts. And let's not forget things like today being guest speaker here to tell my story. None of these things would be possible without the TV show. Thank you everyone.